Well, it's good to see I still draw a crowd. Uh, uh, oh, hello, Erica. Um, well, thank you for coming. It's actually my 15th year standing at this podium, uh, which uh, gives you a lot to reflect on. Uh, we've come a long way, but I've always would like to have done more, and there's still a lot to do. But I showed up here in 2006 after buying the company, stood in front of the press, and uh, they named me the dominatrix of MD helicopters because I was wearing black leather, which is not a lot what they've seen in the CEOs of other OEMs. So I figured on the 15th anniversary, I don't look quite as well as I did 15 years ago, but I'd bless you with my black leather because I'm still the dominatrix of MD helicopters. And believe me, my people need a lot of whipping. <laughs> but I hug them too, so I guess that really does make me an all-around dominatrix. Um, but, you know, this week has taught us a lot of what to reflect on and what to be grateful for. Uh, I can't start this press conference without mentioning uh, how heartbroken I am over the accident that happened right in this area this week. Um, it's not good for this industry that I love so much, but we can't forget the importance of helicopters and what we do, uh, who it serves. I mean, the thing I love most about this company is my customer. I serve those who serve for love of country, whether it's the military, whether it's EMS services, whether it's the law enforcement or search and rescue. And we can never forget how important helicopters are to those who serve and to uh, what we do around the world. And all we can do is make a commitment to be safer and safer and to use the technology that's out there in every industry to try to make these aircraft more and more safe. Uh, one of the things for me is I'm blessed to be part of the automotive industry where we're building autonomous cars and using all kinds of cameras and LIDAR and radar. Um, we can build cocoons around these helicopters. It's one of the things that we have to do to enhance the safety um, as well as just continue to develop the, the technology in our cockpits. So it was hard to come here this week in California to talk about my beloved company and the importance of flight and helicopters, but, you know, we have to balance the sadness with the greatness of these aircraft and how they serve those who serve around the world. Um, so, it was, you know, I, I thought on Sunday this is going to be a difficult show. And then, you know, you can't forget, you can't shake, but then you sit and you meet with your customers who need these aircraft and you realize that we have to go on and we just have to learn from it and get better. Um, can't discount the need for more and more safety and visibility, um, but we have to continue to advance these aircraft because there are certain missions that can't be done any other way. Um, so with that, I'll try to talk a little bit about what we're doing and what's exciting. Uh, when I bought this company 15 years ago, uh, most of you know it was shuttered. You know, had 365 AOGs, no supply chain, no manufacturing line. Uh, and so we've come a long way. But one of the things I'm most proud of is the ability to be both a defense contractor as well as a commercial company. And that's only gotten more and more advanced over the last few years have we really become uh, part of the industrial base and a full defense contractor. Um, our facility is both FAA certified as well as GFRC, which is under the government supervision, which allows us to build military aircraft on one line and commercial aircraft on another line. Also allows us to complete those aircraft with mission equipment on one line, making us much more um, productive. 
So we now have one single engine facility which has both two military lines and a commercial line. And as we bring our 902 back this year, which will be fully vertically integrated and built from airframe through the aircraft, we now have a twin engine facility that will be both military and commercial with the 902 and 969. So we are working on our you know, manufacturing process innovation as well as product innovation. Uh, the highlights, um, of 2018 in terms of innovation would be uh, the manufacturing facility. We finally have finished all the testing for 3350 for all the law enforcement um, and others using the 530F. Uh, hope to have that certification in the next 30 to 60 days. But what's really coming in terms of this year, which is a big year and a big expensive year for us is we now have the Block 2 system on our G model, which is LBIT's helmet displays as well as their mission management system. And we're very excited about this. It'll, we'll have an aircraft by the end of the year flying and ready uh, to, to roll. Um, that is you know, the same computer system that's in the helmet system, which is part of the U.S. Army IDIQ, and it is complex in its capability, but simple in its facility, which is what you look for, right? Less pilot workload, by give, but still giving them everything they want. And we also are very excited about the new 902 uh, cockpit, which is the in-flight system from Universal, uh, we kicked that off this morning uh, in an announcement of our partnership. Uh, I think that cockpit is by far the most advanced in the market. Uh, it takes the best of fixed wing, um, has now been uh, manufactured, and uh, the software is now for helicopters, but it is not only single pilot IFR, it also has a helmet display, even for the commercial market. It, so it has a heads-up display, as well as what we're all looking for, which is the ability to see the terrain, even when the eye will not see it, the helicopter visibility will. And this is one of the things that we need to do to make things more safe. So that project is ongoing. That contract is signed. Um, we hope that we will have that aircraft with that cockpit for sale um, by the end of 2021. Uh, we will also have our military version, which will also hold the same LBIT uh, systems that's in our 530G. So we're really working with the LBIT family, both at Universal, which is their new uh, company, as well as with LBIT in Israel. So. We've got an aggressive team helping us get things done, which we always need. Um, so we're very excited about the 902 and the 969 and the 530G. So a lot of this year is really about continuing technology and innovation. Uh, in terms of gla the glass cockpit that you see in Fresno uh, 530F, as well as in the 530G, um, that will also be certified in the 520N and the 500E. Uh, the glass cockpit's already certified in the 600, but some of the displays will be uh, upgraded as well. So we'll have a block to 600. So by the end of this year, you know, everything will have the new technology and the new glass. We, uh, with all the certification that we need to do, we're trying to uh, bring more in-house DERs available so that we can get things done more quickly. Our lead pilot has just filed uh, his DER paperwork and we're continuing to try to hire DERs. So if you're out there, we're looking for you. Um, we've continued to manufacture uh, heavily for the military. We've finished our 30 for Afghanistan and delivered those this year. 
That makes 60 that we have delivered to Afghanistan and now have an order for another 12. So that is uh, working out well for us. We just delivered uh, six aircraft to Kenya and our pilots are over there for military training along with a CLS contract there. And we're finishing up uh, our aircraft for Lebanon as well. But it's time to really get back and focus on commercial as well. And I think that's what we've done by separating our facilities into single engine and twin engine. Um, Chris Duran, our new chief operating officer, knows that his main role this year is to get my 902 line up and my fuselage built, or I will be like white on rice and not pleasant. So it's been too long, and that's you know, one of the things when I look back on that I need to, should have done better was getting this 902 back on the market. Although I will tell you that I think a little bit of the delay is going to make this aircraft a much better aircraft because we wouldn't have this system in it, which is really state of the art and safer and has more capability than anything we had considered before. Um, it also allows us to get our military aircraft in the market around the same time. So we're working all of those things at the same time. Um, we also got our Block 2 glass, which is a Genesis system certified by the FAA this year. So that also can be in the 530F or the 530G if people prefer that system. Um, we've continued our CLS contract in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, this is, I guess we've been going since 2011. Um, we've been working with Axiom the last couple of years. Oleg, are you around? Well, Oleg, thank you. We appreciate it. May it continue. Um, and, you know, it's just trying. So Chris Duran, our new chief operating officer, he's new. I'm trying to think who else need to introduce. Chuck Evans, part of the sales team. We were honored that Fresno County would allow our aircraft to be in this booth. Uh, they were actually the first F model to get our glass cockpit. And Sheriff Mims was kind enough to say that she would stand up and offer a few words about the relationship and the partnership, <laughs> um, which is always good for us. Thank you, Lynn. It truly is an honor to have our newest helicopter on display. The Fresno County Sheriff's Office, by the way, I'm Margaret Mims. I'm the sheriff of Fresno County, a, a county, a very large county just north of here. Uh, we have three helicopters in our fleet, all MD products. We have had our helicopter, go ahead, that's worth a, the applause. All, all MD products. Uh, since 1997, we have had helicopters. Uh, so for decades, we ha this has been the workhorse of our helicopter fleet. And when I say that, I mean it. I have our pilots here today. They are all deputy sheriffs, which means they take enforcement action. One thing that's different about what we do and shows how versatile this particular piece of equipment is for us, our helicopters, due to our size, will actually land and handle calls for service. That's how versatile this helicopter is. So uh, Fresno County, about 6,000 square miles, and to put that into perspective, that's larger than three states in our union. So the necessity of having helicopters in modern day law enforcement cannot be questioned. So I wanna thank Ms. Tilden for giving me the opportunity to talk about the importance of air support and helicopters in, in law enforcement today. And again, when you take a look at our uh, helicopter, I walked around the corner and looked, saw it, and I said, that's just a thing of beauty. So uh, make sure you take a look at it, answer questions. My, my staff will be available. Uh, and again, thank you, Lynn, for allowing me to say a few words today. Thank you. Thank you. You're set up. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm set up. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and one of the things is that we are completely vertically integrated uh, on this single engine line. I don't know how many of you have come to see our facility, but we build that from the fuselage right on the line, right through the line, which allows us to deliver much more quickly than most. And 
you know, within 12 months, we get aircraft out the door. And our first 70 military aircraft we delivered in under seven months. Uh, now we're getting busier. <laughs> it's not quite as easy. Um, but I believe in vertical integration. It's what I said 15 years ago, and everybody laughed at me. But supply chain is complex, and any one person can keep you from delivering an aircraft. And so the more you can control, the more you can do in-house, uh, the more you're in charge of your own destiny. And between Heritage Aviation, which is a sister company that builds a lot of our parts, and MD, we do about 2,000 parts in-house. And so that's why we decided to bring the 902 airframe into production at home so that we can do the same with the twin, especially when we start uh, really putting them out for the military and have to build in big numbers. So with that, I will take questions, and then I've also got my engineers here, and we've got help from Universal, if you want to know a little bit more about that cockpit. Um, so anything I can do to answer your questions. Hi, Lynn. Tony Osborne with Aviation Week. Um, what's happening with the 6XX program? It's, you know, you guys always ask the tough questions. It's actually just fallen behind. I mean, with what we've decided to do is uh, get the 530G, which is what the military seems to want, um, as well as getting the 969 together. And we're a small company, and we've just had to set priorities. So it hasn't gone away, but it, we're, not, we're not putting dollars. You know, we're putting about $100 million into research and development this year. That's not on the list. So uh, I'm not, you know, the question really will become when we, ha when we can get to it, is that the aircraft we want to build bottom up or is there some other design that we want to take? And, you know, not sure, but much more important for me personally to get the 902, which is, I think, you know, the best aircraft we have, the smoothest aircraft, back into the market and get the 969, which, has you know the lethality of a Black Hawk into the market. Uh, when can we expect uh, STC for legacy aircraft to have retrofit for glass? This year. Okay. Okay. Great. There's there's absolutely no reason that we can't get that done by the end of the year, and it, and frankly we should because it's a good money maker for us. So we just need to kit and we just need to get the STC on the. Uh, sort of certification on the integration outside of our facility. Lynn, do you see the 902 as primarily a military aircraft or a civil aircraft? Both. Okay, the 902 is going to be a civil aircraft. The 969 will be a military aircraft. Um, I don't want to forego one for the other. I think this new universal cockpit for EMS is dope. I mean, it's just there's nothing like it out there. Um, and we really need to focus on both. But what pays for the $100 million of research and development is the military aircraft. When I deliver 30 at a time is different than one off. And truthfully, if I were not doing all this military aircraft, I would not be able to make this level of investment. So I'm grateful uh, to the military contracting for that. But we have a huge commercial base that we need to tap and we need to get the 902 back out to the market I mean, we've got people lined up for it. It's on me that I haven't been able to get it out. But it's now, every bit of it's under contract. We just need to finish it, all the NRA. So now we just need to get it done, and Chris needs to do his job. If I stand up here next year and I tell you it's not done, you guys got to go after Chris. <laughs> Welcome to my world. And Bob, who was brought back to MD just for this universal uh, cockpit. And more, but that's his job, or he won't, he'll get kicked next year. Hi, Lynn. Hello, Hi. Lynn. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. I'm Lynn, the Economic Development Manager for Falcon Field Airport, and we are just thrilled and wanted to say thank you so much for 15 years in Mesa. Well, thank you. Um, look, I, I think <laughs> we think it's a great place to be. We keep taking more and more properties around us and hangars and uh, storage space. I, you know, I feel blessed to be in one place. As someone who owns a lot of companies, my automotive facility, my company has 26 facilities in 12 countries. 
to have everything on that on Falcon Field from the airframe production all the way through the aircraft makes that that has catapulted our progress and success. And I don't think we could have done it. And when I first got here, Falcon Field was very patient. And now we're just grateful to be part of the community. We don't like the guys across the street so much. But other than that, hey, it's all good. I'm Randy Hanson. We're building 400,000 square feet of hangar next to you because we know you're going to grow. <laughs> and I just want you to know there will be a lot of space for you to grow. Lynn, uh, Lynn talked me into coming out. It's an economic opportunity zone, so it's a great location to grow your business. If you're a supplier, we're building you a home right next door where you can walk across the street and talk. So we're going to have the most high-quality aerospace center ever seen on the northeast corner of Falcon Field. And MD That's is great the, to know. MD is the anchor. We, wow. we love having you in that part of the airport, and we're excited to finish building that last corner out there. But there will be beautiful state-of-the-art hangars, and we're counting on you being... We may, need, we may need a little parking lot. Yeah, we're, we're, we already yeah, solved that I, for you, too. We, okay, good, because we were out of parking <laughs> spaces this year. You, you, uh, you have grown, and we want to help, we, well, help you grow. You. Look, you know, as someone who built my business so that I could give people the dignity of work, um, when you finally get to a company that's growing and you're hiring, and, and you know, these jobs are great jobs for people. These are high-paying manufacturing jobs, being the maker of things. Um, almost 70% of our you know, operational and completion workforce, our veterans have served for love of country. They feel like they're still part of it. I mean, there's one thing I can say is, whenever I interview anyone or whenever the customers I c come, I say, there's, there's not a nicer group of people than the people at MD. I mean, I, there are a few asses I need to kick today, but um, in general, it's just such a nice place to be. And some of our people have been there long before I got there just for a love of company and love of our aircraft. And we are growing, and we look forward to talking to you more about the space. But thank you. I'm Jeff from Aviation Daily. I live in South Florida. Me too, uh, I but I never get home very often. I live in Highland Beach, Florida. That's cool. So we've got about just coming up on 800,000 followers, and our, our audience is unique. They're you know, aged between 25 and 35. They want to get their pilot's licenses. Most of us grew up watching Magnum PI, so this is pretty cool seeing <laughs> MD helicopters really grow and blossom. Do you have a day we can schedule with you to come out and see you and get to know you a little better and of course. see the facility? Um, I spend about 50-60% of my time at MD. I travel a lot, but I'm there. So if you talk to Renee and schedule a day, we'll show you around the facility and uh, get to know me better. Super cool. Okay. Do you have your pilot's license too? No. Are you going to get it? Yes. I'm going to learn to fly my airplane and my helicopter when I don't work 20 hours a day, seven days a week. That's but I'm cool. looking for it. It's on my bucket list, but I promise you. I, I have flown a helicopter, but you wouldn't want to be in it when I fly it. But I'm going to get there because I have soft hands. I played tennis for a lot of years in South Florida. So, but please come visit us. We love to show off our facility. We feel like people feel differently about MD when they come to MD. Number one, you see there are a lot of aircraft. We're building a lot of aircraft, delivering. It's all vertically integrated. But we're also, it's a family-owned business, and people who are there love being there, and we love to entertain. So what's the future of MD? Like, are you guys thinking about the, the vertical takeoff, lift, or EVTOL, or any of the space at all, or? You know what, far, yeah. not for us. Okay. You know, I mean, I, you have to know your capability, otherwise I keep getting questions about why I haven't finished things. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're just not big enough. You know, I think that a lot of things are really cool, but we want to be a commercial and military contractor serving those who serve for love of country. That's about it. And, you know, we, we want to get the 902 and the 969, the G, um, just do more for the customers we serve. You know, we have almost a 2,500 aircraft installed base. We need to continue the technology and make sure that that technology gets distributed out to the installed base so they can upgrade their aircraft. Sure. Um, but, you know, people ask me, people want to come and do that. It's just too much. There's only so much we can get done. So I think we'll leave that to the bigger guys and just continue on what we do. Well, you guys turned this around uh, in quite a rapid fashion. So maybe we'll ask, I'll ask the same question in five years. Okay, well, <laughs> you know what? I am, I am known to change my mind. So could happen.
I, you know, I'd like to go electric before I do anything else. I mean, I build, you know, electric vehicles. I really believe in electric. I mean, we need a little more power. I mean, it'd probably start with hybrids, but going electric would be my sort of dream here. Thank you for letting other people hear your questions. Um, and I'm here. So, and so is my team, because if you're going to talk details on the Elbit systems or the universal systems, there are probably better people to get into the details for you. But otherwise, those of you who now have questions that you'd like to ask, come on up. <laughs>